Clubhouse. Welcome back to Three Hosts and a Beacon. This is Paul with Pod Clubhouse, and I'm returning to Beacon 23 for season two with co hosts Gabby and Inez. How are you guys doing tonight? Hello. Excited. I'm excited. Yeah, ecstatic. Thank you. Beacon came back. I'm ready to rock and roll, man. You think you've gotten all the details and theories internalized and can rattle on for a little while about it? I do not, but I will rattle. <laughs> no, no, no. They just come to me as we speak. So it's just a I spontaneous don't know. thing. We'll huh? see how it goes. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> As I was watching the episode, I was just like, maybe I should have watched the finale again. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if we perhaps had forgotten what had happened in the finale, doesn't it boil down to that members of the column had converged on Beacon 23 along with Mm -hmm. Aleph and his mothership and... Kier shot Aster at the very end of that episode with his pulse gun thing, knocked her little brain into the into the railing, <laughs> and she died. Unalived her. <laughs> it's not funny. But it's not funny. I was so sad when that happened, but you <laughs> telling that. Yeah, okay, because I was like, in my head, I'm like replaying what you're saying. And then when they got to that part in my head, it was like way more dramatic. But when you said it that way, it's just, and it just, just it was different. <laughs> so yes, the li- little brain splatter on the rail. Thank you for that detail. Okay, moving on. Yes, it was very sad. Very, very sad. sad. Big moment. Plot twist. Did it come back to you, Inez? Yes. <laughs> Our it's perfect. all right, Inez. We're up to speed. Let's go. It took me a second to be like, okay, that's that guy. Then, the, oh yeah, and he can. And Finch does the brain thing. And all right, it, it started to. Paul, started to come that back sounds here. like my journey. That is exactly what I went through. Thank you. This picks up. I mean, at the second that the last episode stops, mm-hmm. Halen wondering if there's anything to be done. Harmony is intangible. What can she do except offer advice? I know what how it struck me when Harmony had to call the time of death right then, just having seconds before asked Olive to intervene in some way. But how did it strike you, Gabby, when she had to do that? Well, you know, it just started, right? The entire episode, it was just like one take and then they cut it for the season finale. And so it was chaos. You know, she had lots of passion. She was really upset. She was arguing with Q right before then. And so, you know, I was like, obviously right there with her. And then, yeah, when she kind of caught herself and had to call the time of death, it was a total change of pace and a reality check for all of us that this is not a chaotic thing. We've seen plenty of people die and move on and Harmony has kept it together. And so you saw a bit of Bart in her, (laughs) meaning you saw some humanity or emotion of just kind of letting go and losing herself for that moment. So it's a somber moment for me. Do you think Aleph could have intervened if he had wanted to, Inez, or do you think that's beyond him? I think that Aleph is, has the capability at some level with the brain and the brain is super powerful. So maybe there's there's a, a possibility, but this was like some serious injury that happened outside of Aleph, right? He, like it wasn't like him going in like that other guy's brain and having him like chop up, you know, cut up his his neck (laughs) like in that kind of way i feel like that's a little bit different don't know if he could do all of that for this specific kind of injury but 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 didn't like bart save someone at one point he saved sophie right that was her name yeah she was poisoned right she was poisoned right but aleph is more powerful so maybe he could have pulled something out of his back pocket you know because he does say later, rational reactions lead to complicated outcomes. And that to me is like a lot of cockiness, but he's kind of like our G.O.D. here. So I'm going to go ahead and say he could have done something, but he didn't want to. Maybe. I don't know. He really cares a lot about the artifact and she was going to help him. And so I don't see why he wouldn't have 
intervene then that being like the most up the utmost important mission for him but uh i felt really like sad and also shocked seeing harmony having visible panic while aster was dying but that but then the sudden like realization of doing all the calculations of all of the vitals of how they're going and just going into like the time of death blah, 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 right and that was like sad seeing her have this like panic moment and then doing her duty but then also there's a lot of things that go on with harmony's eyes that tell the stories from her differently that i really appreciate i saw what you're talking about she is imprinted on aster so that's the core of her programming is looking out for aster and then like you said it's the math or maybe it was olive behind the scenes just saying it's over it's a matter of seconds when it felt like there was still hope and then no hope just like a switch it does mirror reality and the way things actually work out so that's dramatic to see play out on screen yeah, and you're right, Inez. He couldn't do anything about it. Olive couldn't do anything about it because he would have. So, yeah, I, I retract my for fun theory. But Finch's deal, the the difference, of course, is that he's jacked in, like cyberpunk style. And that, since we have seen episode two, we're not going to talk about episode two, but given what happened to Finch and what happened in episode two, it makes me wonder about the future of the episodes and the nature of the reality that we'll experience, especially whenever Olive's around. Can we count on what we're seeing, or is it going to be like a holodeck kind of situation like Finch had, except a holodeck where you can cut your neck open (laughs) and it actually works? Yeah, you die in your dream, you die in real life. That's the rules, Paul. Yeah, but I didn't count on it actually like forming Freddy Krueger style marks it was so cool (laughs) it was such a cool visual right that whole like jumping back and forth of head prison moment and real life moment i love that one thing that i noticed about olaf and his powers in this episode was that although he is kind of godlike kind of unless he's focused on what he wants to happen then then it's not automatic it doesn't just happen in like a like a you know your heart beats without you needing to think about it kind of way that's not how his powers work he either is focusing on you and stopping you like he did with finch in this case where he put him in his own private little hell and then put an end to it or he's letting finch get in his way because he's not paying attention i thought that was um an interesting like rule that they've developed into olive's character and i wonder how that might play out against him in the future. So no, you're right. He <laughs> he did say that he was an interface and Harmony is like more... He said he's an algorithm. He's an algorithm, right. And so he realizes his limitations and like he's... The fact that he said he was envious of Harmony because she's able to like experience more and feel more and evolve more like that that uh, was an interesting perspective. Absolutely. Where I think he felt kind of sorry for himself for a moment and then immediately was like you know what if i'm gonna be an algorithm then i'm gonna go full algorithm and i need to do better and that's why he like completely got rid of his milan version self a kind of humanistic quality that he would have so that was really fun to see him just like kind of flip the fucking switch and be like you know what i am mighty mighty and powerful and i've been letting these people just like rock me for and for what like they're stupid and puny these guys can go away for the sake of humanity which makes me wonder what his actual goal is for humanity well if it's remained the same it is that singularity kind of vision right he wanted to merge all human consciousness into just one singular everything that he thought that the artifact could facilitate that process i guess just shoot people into that sucks them into the (laughs) into the into the singular awareness and bang you got his dream and then what they're just existing somewhere else or in this well that's a great question everywhere too is it one singular human awareness that 
encompasses everybody that's sucked into it? Yeah. Or is it that each one of those consciousnesses has their own autonomy within that awareness, but they just don't have the constraints of a mortal body anymore? I've read a lot of sci-fi, so I've seen it (laughs) in multiple ways. It reminds me of Black Mirror episode, you know, where like people like voluntarily plug in to quote unquote like die and basically it's to release their consciousness into whatever their format that they want to be in this like new virtual space. So it's kind of like they live forever, but their real body die. So I guess maybe like it's this this kind of thing. But I think different from the Black Mirror stuff where they kind of can choose their paths or whatever. I think he wants everybody to have like the super processing I think you're right. And he doesn't want I think are you thinking of the San Junipero episode? Oh that was like the only a good one. Happy ending, right? Yeah, not well, good. Like yeah. they were bad. It was the only happy ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but but that's sort of that idea of that one, right? Where the consciousnesses yes. kind of mm-hmm. go. Yeah, I'm all for that personally. How romantic of Milan slash Olive to want that to happen. I personally don't think he wants that though. I think he wants just like Inez is suggesting the super processor. Yeah, but then for what? Great question. That is a perfect question. I have. I don't think he's spilled the beans on what comes after that. Yeah, he doesn't have to. We're nobodies. Maybe he's like the Joker said. He's like, what would happen if the dog caught the car, right? He wouldn't <laughs> He wouldn't know what to do next. Well, maybe that's all if, if he gets his singularity. He doesn't have a plan after that. All right. Well, then I think that if that's the case, we know where this episode is going and this whole season is going. You know, it's about the chase, right? Well, that's a good question. I was wondering about that. I mean, I look at the poster. I can see Halen's big on the poster. Harmony's not even on the poster, but you know, Rude, pa- lame. pound for pound, doesn't it kind of seem like Olive would need to do battle on his own plane of existence? Kind of that ethereal AI plane that Harmony exists on, not the physical that Halen does. I don't think there's anything Halen can do to Olive. It's like an ant taking on a man. Uh, it's like, you can't do it. But Harmony might. It's it's like uh, Lord of the Rings, right? I am no man, right? <laughs> it's like that. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Eowyn. Sure, sure. Or, you know, one of the theories that we had in the last season was what kind of show is this going to be? Is the beacon going to be one ongoing story with these people? Or is it going to be like, hey, weird things happen at the beacon and whoever's at the beacon like may change, but the story continues. So I guess it's also kind of like a lost vibe. Um, Mm. So I guess we can do one or the other. And if either way, you know, like Star Trek kind of did it similarly where Q was a really big character. But sure, he can do anything and everything at any point. He could even like turn back time. But, you know, did he mess with it? That's a nice part of the story. And it's something that's always going to exist. But is it our main idea? Is it our main focus? Is it the main storyline? I don't know. And I I don't personally think so. I think it might be more like Star Trek where it's like, we're doing this and then you kind of come and go and wreak havoc occasionally. I think I like what you're saying there, Gabby. Or as I was reconsidering how to pronounce your name, I was thinking of gay by. But... um... Ooh, I like that. I like that. (laughs) Let's go with that this time. (laughs) Gay by Vivar. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly right. (laughs) Gay by Vivar. Right here. (laughs) Perfect. To that end, though, with the artifact, perhaps, and the beacon, because the show is not called Artifact, it's called Beacon 23, then maybe both things need to outlive everybody. And like like you're Mm -hmm. alluding to Lost, the island gets to stay there forever. It's, Mm -hmm. It's its caretakers that come and go. It just so happens that Jacob and the man in black were at at war for a very, very, very long time. But the island persisted. And this is kind of the same thing. Olive might be immortal and he might need someone, whether it's a Harmony or Halen or or them in conjunction to kind of wipe him off the board. That may happen. It may not. But the artifact will persist. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know how they can wipe him off the board. All right, pivot us, Inez. <laughs> well, I feel like a lot of people really enjoyed season one because Lena was amazing. Aster was such a great, interesting character. And now she's gone. I'm pretty sure permanently, <laughs> right? I mean, he, yeah, her body I got know, blown man. up. I, was yeah. this the off scene death? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, she went into the artifact, so I'm like a little bit hopeful that she kind of dips in even a little bit, you know, within like some consciousness way. I don't anything. know. I don't know. She was I'm, listed. I'm just hopeful for that. She was credited at the end. <laughs> she was credited at the end as a guest, uh, as a guest star. And that means she can be in like three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just feel like we need to spend a little bit a moment here to talk about how we feel about this. She was such a big thing. Like, it, it can't just say she got kicked off. I don't even care about Olive right now until we like honor Lee, mm. you know, Aster <laughs> and Bart. Let us and honor Bart. both. Yes, yes. How do you guys feel of the idea of what's going on with Aster? right now and where you think her role is now in season two i thought that her role in the, in the potential of like interfacing with the artifact or understanding the artifact or understanding the entire game that's being played right now she had a pretty good chance of being able to do that it's just that the column got in the way of whatever fireworks that was going to cause and killed her. So, But her, I think her character had a lot of potential upside compared to Halen's. Halen's going to have a harder time figuring this out, but he brings other kinds of things to the table. But without her, he's going to need help. I think he's going to need help to figure out whatever it is his purpose is in all this. Aster was that, wow. and, and now she's not around. Or she is on. She is only a man. She, I know. She is on the season two poster. Yeah, you're right. But it's like the same picture from the first poster, and then they like shrunk it and then faded it and then put it in the background. <laughs> After thought, you're know, like for all of you oh, coming geez. back, for, coming back for her. We want you to think that she's going to be here because I honestly I loved Aster all throughout season one. So I don't know. They're doing the Game of Thrones death for me here. You know, like cutting out my favorite person right right out the front right when you fucking greeted me and welcomed me to season two you just let me know to, to destroy my gut right and i was so sad watching the flashbacks of his memories like with her because their little like drug hub in the you know the go <laughs> in the lighthouse you know the cut oh my god that shattered. one scene where he no when he like thinks back back at her and then she's like talking with her mouth full i was like really that was the one i love that though because like gabby you and i we have conversations all the time and so many if we're like eating and we catch each other with a really funny stuff falling out or our face like full and whatnot oh, like those are the memorable <laughs> funny moments that we're laughing at Jesus. each other and then talking about it you know well okay so i'm gonna try and think if there's like any significance to that because she said it tastes like shit but it does the job and i was like why why is that why is <laughs> this very awkward little encounter the one thing that he's like hmm very interesting now i have an idea that's where i want to go with this but just in general as far as lena Heedy, she's wonderful she's magnificent she is queen and i don't want to totally like uh I don't think that she carried last season. Um, I do think she's amazing and I fangirl like hardcore. I also loved Bard and other characters, whatever. But if she isn't significant in this series, I just feel like, you know, like Black Mirror, right? You have a beginning, middle and end. And sometimes that end, it's hard. You have to accept it. But you still go on and watch the next episode. Like I still go back for Black Mirror. So I'm a loyalist and I'm going to come back for Beacon. And even if it means that I miss her and I'm going to be hopeful that I get a sneak peek of her in every episode then fine that's gonna hold me till the very end if it needs to but yeah i don't even want to think about if she's gone gone and i'm open to the wonder and i love lena Heedy. if she's going to grace us with her presence again then i will be so honored and if not i'm hopeful for other cool characters to woo me <laughs> very well said gabby she's available <laughs> 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 she's open to new relationships with new characters 
Okay. <laughs> no, that's really great. I think that that's important people to go through. And just real quickly talking about Halen's mindset, right? You said, why is this the memory that he's pulling this random stupid thing about the taste or whatever? I think it's because he is such in a dark, destroyed place. And I think that he's just trying to like muster up the strength of reminding himself that he's going to have to like get through tough things. And so these are just the little flashbacks <laughs> that are helping him kind of so figure like out eating his shitty food problem. was the yeah. If you're going to have, okay. yeah, if you're going to have to eat every day, multiple meals every day, and every single day is shit. Like you're want to talk, right? Like what we eat is based off of what our mood is. We have that choice. He get, doesn't have a choice. He's got these very and barrels of dry rice or something whatever it was right i'm just saying like maybe it's just for him like self-coaching <laughs> his way yeah. through it's all like this prison isa brand gruel or, or something uh, mush <laughs> i like gruel <laughs> pocahontas throwback hope you caught that okay so this episode was all over the place so going back finch right finch column guy he got his face cut whatever so question about how he was dying was he dying because he was overdosing because she was she like gave him too much drug to keep him up to heal i think was, he was because he said we're gonna die anyway did he mean like physically because of what she just did or did he mean because we're in the column and uh, Olive is going to kill us or what? They were on a pretty sure like a one-way mission with the bomb. As the plan evolved, it kept getting to the point where either they were going to have to detonate the bomb on the beacon or try to fly the beacon into the mothership and detonate the bomb. Just some combination of things that was all resulting in them, in him and Saldana and Kier dying. To your first question, though, I think when Aleph and he did battle in the private holodeck, he just fucked him up. I mean, he, he, just, he just zapped his brain in a way that made Saldana put him in a chemically or yeah induced mm -hmm. coma, coma to try to, you know, do what those kind of comas do is to relieve swelling or trauma or, or whatever, because Aleph had done a, a job on him. That was that's how I read it. After that, there's three things happening, right? So the column people had their own agenda of, I don't even know what, like, they, they want to kill all of them. However, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Good luck, guys. And then you have Olive, who's just, Olive was really interesting because he was observing everything all the time. And there were, so when Halen was like with Aster and he was like saying his goodbyes, Olive was watching him in the video. Why was he doing that? What do you think was like the significance of Halen being there? And why does Olive care? Was it just him staring or was there purpose behind that? Like suspiciousness? This Gabby or gay boy, um, <laughs> is part of a little bit of the frustration I had with this episode in that the pacing of it all, it lacked a sort of urgency for me. And and I know that in the end, we needed to have Halen have gotten all these different kinds of input from the column, from Olive, from Harmony, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's encouragement or shame or bullying or provoking or who, whatever approach they tried. He needed all of that to come up with his plan, which was to kind of double cross everybody. Hooray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in the meantime, though, there are these people pacing wise that all hate each other just kind of agreeing to hang out in different parts of the beacon, <laughs> yeah. you know, plotting with, yeah. with Halen going back and forth or just, or like you said, or, you know, in, taking Aster's body down the gravity well, or, um, what did you guys think of the pacing though, of what I was describing? Just this, okay, now yeah. you berate me. Now you berate me for a while. I fine, was fine with the pacing because I it gave me enough time to process all my thinking of like, wait, like what happened again? Like, what was the, who is this person? <laughs> you know, all of my treacherous things that I should have done before I came into um, the podcast or into watching it. But so, um, so there so you the, go. They just so, did it on purpose for the majority of the audience. Paul. 
but no, but I honestly think that it matches just kind of like a lot of stuff. Cause I think you had kind of like a same hole about this that you didn't like from season one. When you're like, why are they just like letting him walk around after he released himself from the handcuffs or whatever? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, you know, and to me, it was just like, because where the fuck are you going? Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, where, exactly. where are you going? <laughs> so, so then that's why I, I kind of like apply that to here. It's just like, there really isn't a timeline like the you know there's no reason like for that because they're in space and and so that's how i kind of just attributed it is that it's it's because there wasn't there isn't like something coming after you in this like moment and you just gotta it, you know what if you're gonna do something right make sure that you give yourself the time what was that we had we worked at some place paul that had the saying that nothing is too urgent or important that you cannot take the time to do it you know S safely, safely right? right so you it's the same thing here he's, he's like got a lot too. of you know it has to do it just right they get all these details just right to execute it to like keep him safe and then achieve what he wanted to do and piss everybody off and then what i mean i don't think he i don't know okay okay so you're arguing that if you're in a fight with god the timeline doesn't really matter because you're gonna you got one chance to shoot your shot and you don't need to rush it yeah yes on top of that, Olive, our G.O.D. here, I think that he learned his lesson. Like, he was letting them do whatever because he was letting the column chill. He was letting Halen walk around because he thought, I'm above them. Like, at the end of the day, I can just kill them off and it's just fine. But I guess he underestimated them or he underestimated Halen. And so he learned his lesson. So if you didn't like the pace on this episode, well, neither did Olive, Paul. And Olive learned his lesson and now he's on a rampage. So... Maybe the following episodes will be a little quicker for you. Well, some fast pace, some slow pace. You know, it works for other shows. You know, there were, <laughs> you know, like Star Trek The Next Generation, I think it's a pretty good template for that sort of thing, where they had some that were kind of whimsical, some that were like, holy crap, what's the going, what's going on here? Um, and they fit them all in and made it all seem cohesive. So I'll hope that you're right. Because <laughs> because the pacing, mm. even though, even though the fight with God thing is true in time may not exactly matter since he knows any everything anyway i felt like there was still just a lot of wandering between quarters <laughs> <laughs> for Halen. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting though that like he knows everything anyway as long as he's given access? That's partially true. If you recall the end kind of the denouement moment of evil grandiosity sort of that Dr. Manhattan moment of evil mm -hmm. when he's saying that when he interfaced with Finch, which would have been like a while ago at that point, he pulled out all of the information about column bases and personnel and he was about to go fuck mm -hmm. their shit. Th that's very much like uh, Ozymandias, right? He's like, I launched the missiles 30 minutes ago, right? Uh, th this plan is already in play. There's nothing you can do anyway. So ta-ta, see you later. Mm -hmm. Evil stuff. He's an evil guy. That's the point. That was the whole point of that part. All right, whatever. I mean, he's almighty, so I'm not going to go and call him evil. He just has his own agenda. I'm Bart's gone. I'm on Alt Team Olive now. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, it's sound weird for me too, but I also was like, you know, who are they to say that Olive is the bad guy here? <laughs> you know like he's a, he's a visionary what? and he's using a lot of logic and they are flawed he's transhumanist well, i was just gonna say they're talking about like halen i don't know what was this halen has to decipher the message what man they don't even know what they're doing they're just like a cult they need to go away that's how i feel they're terrorists. Bring back like the military people. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm anti terrorists now. And I think that as far as pace goes, like maybe we we're supposed to care a lot more about Finch and his process. And maybe that was supposed to be like the chaos and the feelings. But I kinda was like ready for them to just move on. So and then when oh, when it yeah. happened, when he just like took the oxygen out, I was like, Thank you, Olive. Thank you. Don't know why you decided to do that like fifty minutes in. But it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. I was not sad to see them gone. I was kind of like, oh, my God, I hope this isn't like episodes of dealing with these people. Because at the end of the day, they, they weren't that sympathetic. You know, I can understand their that they feel like they are humanity's last hope against Olive and his mission to turn everybody into a super processor. But they're, not a single one of them was likable or in a way that made me want to be like, I believe you, you're a charismatic leader. Send yeah. me your, uh, your newsletter. And I loved that their death was like off screen. 
<laughs> I love that he just like came back and then we just like see them plop and I'm like, all right, yeah. like this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Peace. Finally. Thank you. This That's is really so nice. Funny, <laughs> it was like he plucked he plucked the flowers, put them in a nice bouquet for us, and we're like, Aw. That's nice. They're also dead and dying, but it's also still nice. Yeah. How did we get so corrupt? Um, well, okay. So moving on though, like to Harmony. Harmony with her goodbye, her speaking with Halen while he like was saying his goodbyes and she like looked at Aster. That was a really special conversation between them where she said that she thinks of Halen as a friend and he said he thinks that it back. I thought that was really sweet, especially since a friend is kind of like an equal and Harmony so far has not really been an equal. She's kind of been superior because she's AI, but she's also inferior to to Aster because she's Aster's AI. And so this was the first time that she was kind of her own individual and she and Halen had this equality and this special moment that Aster like brought them together. So I don't know. I thought that that was really sweet and also a little bit of a change of pace for this episode. Oh man, she's lost. I mean, her person has died. Her God has shown up and has started bossing her around, you know? In the absence of Aster, she has to do everything that he says. She can act very human and almost show us emotions that she's not supposed to have as an AI, but then he'll say mm-hmm. he'll say the magic words and then she has to kind of like a one of the hosts on Westworld has to just turn into a robot again and mm-hmm. speak very stilted and regimented about whatever she's supposed to report on right then. That moment where she's dealing with a kind of a person to person basis, not AI to human, but just people that have gone through something, lost somebody in common. This is a different harmony than what we've experienced. So shortly after that, Olive, when he noticed that Harmony and Halen were friendly with each other, like he looked unhappy with that. And then next time we see him with Harmony, he tells her that she needs to reboot or or what is not reboot, but debrief and rehabilitate. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And and that was like a special moment that brought me back to part two when she, you know, said that she wanted to like keep her memory and live with her memory for a while longer. And that, yeah, that's when Olive said that like, you know, he's incapable of that and that's whatever. But that was also really sad. It brought me back to Bart and it made me have feelings and it made me sad for um, Harmony. So I really hope that we go, we travel with Um, Harmony. I want to know more about her and hopefully they don't like destroy her or she doesn't destroy herself the way Bart did because I'm most intrigued with this AI storyline. This AI with a new somewhat soul storyline. Do you think that she was realizing that she was acting out of authority or out of her programming a bit totally. like when she identified that this thing was fake the dark matter alert was fake and then watching them loading up the bombs and Aster's thing and hiding intentionally hiding that from Olive I kind of felt like her eyes were not just seeing it whatever she, I feel like in season one we got a lot of her being like I'm sorry I have to be really I'm loyal to QTA I'm their property so Aster you're on your own very hard line with Aster so it was interesting that here we are she's only known Halen for this short time and here she is acting very out of protocol I think it all has a lot to do with the fact that Aster is her girl like that's her person and Aster and Halen had this connection and so part of her is partial to Halen because they have Aster in common. And she absolutely knew what she was doing. It was totally on purpose. So she was she was evolved. And that's dangerous because, you know, AI needs to remain controlled to follow those three rules that AI should follow. Asimov's three laws. Yeah. Do you want to say three laws? <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't remember. It's, it's can't hurt a human, right? Yeah, can't hurt a human, right? Can't hurt yourself. Unless you're, it it um, if, is breaking the first law. Yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. A robot a ro- may not... Oh, okay, Ines. Go no. Ahead. Go ahead, Gabby. Go Have ahead. Have your moment. No, go three. You go. <laughs> <laughs> As the representative of normal people... <laughs> I have Googled. Uh. (laughs) Um, Yeah, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human to become to harm. 
That's one. Two, a robot must obey orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Uh, okay, okay. The third, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Right, so that's like fine and dandy, but unrealistic for our AI. Well, I would have so gotten a D plus on remembering that off the top of my head. No, I think it was like well, a I think I made a C. Plus. Yeah. I say. Very kind. We'll give you a, a bell curve to B minus. Ah, yes. That's my sweet spot. I'm going to tangent because I hate the whole minus plus thing. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Beacon. Beacon 23. Okay. It's really funny, though, that Halen is just like being a big baby the whole time. Like everyone has their agendas and he's just like, I want to leave. I want to leave. I want to leave. But then finally, you know, he did whatever. He had his own agenda and he accomplished it. So once again, throughout this one, I'm like, Jesus, Halen, like get it together. You're so whiny. And then he like tricked me. So I thought, okay, respect. I'm sorry. Good job. So this is funny. Okay. So now what did he do? He like started the whole show over again, right? Because he just, like, blew away all the little pieces. Now we're right back at one, but just without Aster. Right. He detonated the bomb with Aster in the artifact. It created some sort of reaction slash explosion that broke out the glass and beat up the rest of the lighthouse slash beacon. And that's it. That's all we know. We know that Olive uh, felt good enough to leave. Like, well, there's nothing to worry about here anymore. Stranding Halen back on the beacon. Now, long term, oh my gosh. does this mean that artifacts and rocks are going to start reappearing again and start reforming the artifact? This is like a supernatural kind of thing or beyond our level of understanding. So hitting it with a bomb just doesn't seem like a permanent solution for getting rid of the artifact. Are they going to come up with a different way to get back together? Because so far they used like Solomon <laughs> really to hunt the pieces down. And uh, it doesn't sound like the beacon has any anything left. I don't remember if it still has a picker or not. That was really fun, though, for me seeing Olive switch because he is the almighty. And I'm like, you go, Olive. You show us what you can do. Like, you're, I want to see that power. And so seeing him get really angry and frustrated and then beget Harmony. Like, I, I <laughs> loved it. I was here for it. And then I love how he's just like, good luck, Halen. You're going to die alone and cold. Like, I don't know. I love Love that last speech. Have you been yelling that at your children ever since? I beget you. No, I was holding it in and I was waiting for Inez to say some dumb shit. <laughs> 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 but she's keeping it together so far. Oh man, you've been put on notice, what a, Inez. What a dumb bitch this one. <laughs> I beget you. <laughs> Disappear, B. Disappear. We need that to be a button sound. <laughs> we need to add, add Thank that. Thank you. Um, oh, my voice or his voice? Yes, his voice. your voice. Your voice oh, doing my. this. Thank you. I beget you. Every time some my dumb ba- plot thing pops B. up. <laughs> Every time you talk about it. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is, I know. That's what Beacon 23 podcast is. It's a battle dick singing contest. Always. <laughs> no, it's not a competition. Okay, moving on, moving right along. <laughs> I guess everyone's dead, so nobody can have like any favorite characters. Does anyone want to? Um, <laughs> all like, of our Halen or Harmony? Yeah, that's all we got. We, yeah. <laughs> we have well, we have Harmony has been sent to debrief and rehabilitation. At this point, we don't know oh what that is. It doesn't sound super fun. I don't like it. It um, sounds horrible and sad. Well, yeah. And we, as people, know what that looks like for people. But what does that look like for an AI? Did we see, I mean, was that what happened with Bart kind of? Well, I mean, he was reset. He wasn't debriefed, but then he was reset. And we saw what it did to him long term. And so is that sort of thing going to happen to Harmony? Like, if that's how it goes, just reprogramming, removing memories. Is she going to add? Perhaps. But Bart was not as advanced as she is. And she saw Bart go through it, so, yeah. She's evolved. She was able to lie to the boss after, like Inez said, she didn't tow the company line, even though she saw somebody, Halen, sticking a bomb in Aster's pod. Her programming should have said, hey, boss, look over there. Something strange is afoot at the Circle K. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> hey, boss, look over there. <laughs> Something strange is <laughs> It rolls off good. the tongue, yeah. Yeah, it was... It was... <laughs> I like how you said that, but one other moment that they had between Harmony and Olive that I thought was really cool. Olive has a lot of philosophical things to drop. He and Bart were those guys. And so I thought it was um, a nice and sad conversation when he was talking to Harmony basically about like having attainable goals and how like she has that so she can feel some sort of satisfaction when she's done it but that's something that he will never ever experience so it kind of seems like he's contemplating and and if he could feel regret he would be feeling regret for doing this to himself which also makes me think i know that he's this guy that's like he's a straight arrow he like has his goal and he's going to accomplish it that's what he did for himself because i keep thinking about milan as you know in that one episode that was my absolute favorite episode in last season and then this version all if and and i'm comparing those two and they do have some similarities but one guy had this passion right the human milan and all if it seems like he still is trying to fulfill the tasks but now they're just like busy work tasks and i don't think that they're really going to go anywhere with it but i did appreciate that he did bring this up because it is this like existential crisis that he has which like what can he possibly do where can he go from here he can't even see the artifact, can he? No. So, like, I want more for Olive, and I'm just, like, sad for him at this point. <laughs> I want him to have a next step. How can he up-level? You're right. He's got that immortal ennui. <laughs> what happens next? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it sounds. It's so sad. It's so sad. Poor Olive. <laughs> and all he wanted was Aster's pendant, and they wouldn't even give him that. Yeah, like, why? Can you tell me, Paul, why? Well, that was part of <laughs> Harmony's subterfuge, right? She satisfied him by saying that she would transfer the information that was stored that she had about the pendant or in the pendant to him. And he was like, okay, fine. And then he lost interest in it, even though he originally had wanted it. The reason she didn't let him get it was because he would have seen the bomb, though. I right. Guess. It would have been pretty obvious. There's only supposed to be a, <laughs> a, a dead lady in there. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't show us the bomb, right? Like, you no. did I just miss that? Because, I mean, did they, like, put it on her tummy? Was she holding on to it, like, in the pod? They showed us, like, eight individual, like, bomb things. So they're kind of like the size of footballs, each one of them. And so they just put them in probably along, like, the crevices around the border of it. Like, they're small to go into, you know, because it's kind of like a shape of a kayak, <laughs> you know, the, the this, like, pod <laughs> thing. So there's, there's, like, leg space down there by her feet and head, you know. You know, we've, we've done a lot of road trips. <laughs> You can stuff stuff. Well, and these are like all... Oh. <laughs> the point I mean, is have, that we, we know, been, we know we how have... to Tetris stuff in. Yes, in kayaks and in cars. Yes, we have been... Actually, no, Paul, I used to kayak all the time and I know the canoe and she was... Oh my God, Inez in a canoe is the best thing. I recommend it. It should be like a ride because this girl does have the banter. It's thrilling because for some reason she's not the best with balance. <laughs> so it's it's pretty great. Maybe Just I'll have to podcast. Awesome. I'll podcast from a canoe from, one of these days. I would like all of us to podcast from a canoe. I want all three of us. In, like, I'm serious. We need to do that team building because Paul needs to fucking know. It's just the best time of your life, Paul. And you might get wet. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Sometimes I love you, but the rest of the time I beget you. <laughs> Strong finish. All right. So what do you guys think comes next with this season? With what we have, we have a stranded Halen. We have a pissed off Olive who's going to go wreak havoc on the column. We have Harmony. We don't know where she's at and no other living characters that we care about. <laughs> feels a little bit hopeless right i i mean i'm looking forward to seeing halen in his prison right prison life in the beacon just trying to see what that's like now that it's beat up even more yeah and then like all of thing maybe we'll even get some news again about that kid that killed his mom in season one you know that that was like <laughs> that maybe there's we, we've been talking about that coming back maybe it will circle back at some point <laughs> I most look forward to like more AI stuff. I really enjoyed the AI perspective. Um, and so this first episode had like a really, really cool and memorable of that. So I just want more of that. 
Well, that leaves us in quite a bad spot for the rest of the season, which is a great way to kick off a second season. Everywhere to go is up because there's nowhere else down we can go. So looking forward to episode two of the second season of Beacon 23. This has been three hosts in a beacon with Paul, Inez, and Gabby. If you like this podcast, please consider rating and reviewing it on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. So it'll work the algorithm and other people can find it and everybody can join in and enjoying all of our wild theories week after week for the rest of the season. Looking forward to episode two. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. This has been an original Pod Clubhouse production. Pod Clubhouse is a podcast network dedicated to encouraging collaboration among podcasters and friends to bring a fresh voice and diverse perspective on a wide array of content. Please visit and leave a comment for us at podclubhouse.com. Rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast feeds on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find us at Pod Clubhouse. Our DMs are always open, and we'd love to hear from you. Pod Clubhouse.